Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm uh, pleased to rise on behalf of New Zealand First to take a call in this first reading of the Geographical Indications Wines and Spirits Registration Amendment Bill. And New Zealand First will be supporting this bill to the Select Committee. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this, uh, this is an area of particular interest to me, uh, being a, a winemaker by trade. Um, and I'm sure it will be of particular interest to uh, Mr. Smith when we come to uh, debate the bill at the, at the Select Committee under the most able and uh, affable chairmanship of uh, Mr. McKelvey. So, good things take time, uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> good things take time, and, and, um, uh, and good wine is no exception. And uh, it, it would seem that, uh, or at least I hope, because it certainly seems the case, um, that uh, good legislation is no exception either. Um, and I say that, Mr. Speaker, because the genesis of this amendment bill um, lies in the Primary Act, which was the, is the Geographical Indications of Wines and Spirits Registration Act 2006. Um, and the explanatory note for this bill says that the Primary Act was enacted in 2006 but never brought into force. Um, so I'm grateful for the explanation that um, Mr. Smith gave uh, about the reasons why it was not enacted at the time, because it seemed to me that um, it did seem a little bit like making hay while the sun uh, was shining. And, and I wondered if perhaps back in, uh, in 2006 things were going so well that Parliament wasn't very busy, um, maybe that the House was up to speed with everything and, uh, and the government didn't have much to do. Um, and on that basis, they thought they could uh, enact a few laws and, and just sort of have them uh, on the back burner waiting to be brought into force um, if and when the, there was a rainy day and, and, uh, and that needed to be done in a hurry. Um, but um, I, I digress a little, uh, Mr Speaker. The Act was never brought into force and, and now that it is about to be, uh, we have discovered that there are a few things not quite right with it, um, things that need to be remedied and brought up to speed, uh, as it were, before we, before we uh, bring the bill out of mothballs and dust it off and fire it up. Um, and so, hence, we are here debating this amendment bill, Mr Speaker. Um, and it, it is not a monumental piece of legislation. It's not going to set the world on fire. Um, I very much doubt that the 6 o'clock news on either channel uh, will run this as a headline. Um, and well, you, well you, you say that, but you never know. <laughs> it hasn't been that quiet, I don't think. <laughs> um, so, but nevertheless, it is an important piece of legislation, and it's important that we get it right. Um, so to do that, we need to understand why it has come about, what the, the reasoning and purposes for it were. Um, and we will pull all this to bits again in the Select Committee um, and examine the, the entrails of the original bill and so forth. But there's no substitute, Mr Speaker, for going back to the beginning. Um, and I found, uh, when I discovered that this bill had been lurking around for, for 10 years, my curiosity was piqued um, somewhat. So I went back into the archives, um, went, went back and had a look at the Hansard from uh, when the bill was originally introduced. Um, and uh, it, it's quite, uh, it's intriguing, Mr Speaker, looking back 10 years into the, into the Hansard and, and seeing some of the names that, that pop out of the pages. Um, many that, uh, that some who've been here in the House a long time uh, will remember, many who were outside the House but followed proceedings of the House will remember, but uh, names that, that are household names that were household names back then, walking the corridors of power, um, and, and so many of them not here anymore, but uh, some who actually still are. Um, the Honourable Judith Tizard, who was the Associate Minister of Commerce at the time and, and moved the bill uh, back in December of 2005, the 13th of December, Mr Speaker, which um, quite by coincidence, at least I imagine it's by coincidence, um, was the anniversary, the, the 363rd anniversary of the day that Abel Tasman first sighted New Zealand. And, and I, 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 I mention this because, because it would not have occurred um, to, to Captain Tasman back then, <laughs> uh, that perhaps three and a half centuries later, um, the, the, legisl the, the legislature of the islands that he was looking at for the first time would be debating um, a bill to give recognition to geographical indicators of areas that might possibly be bearing his name. Um, so so uh, and I, I, I doubt that um, the Honourable Judith Tizard gave that, that possibility very much thought either, Mr Speaker. In fact, um, her speech from the files of the Hansard gives no indication that that may have been the case. Um, she did, however, outline the purpose of the bill, which was uh, to put in place a modern, efficient and cost-effective process for the registration of geographical indications of wines and spirits, which both serves the purposes of our industries and meets our obligations under the TRIPS Agreement. So TRIPS, the TRIPS Agreement is the World Trade Organisation's agreement on trade-related aspects and international property rights, uh, Mr Speaker. And the Minister went on to outline quite a bit more about what the bill was intended for and why it would be a very good thing for Parliament to pass it. Um, and not to, not to everyone's satisfaction, um, Mr Speaker, I have to say, because she was followed by a certain uh, Dr uh, the Honourable Lockwood Smith, who began his contribution by expressing frustration at what he perceived was the Minister's lack of understanding of the bill. Um, he chastised her for, in, in the inimitable way that, uh, that Dr Smith has, I presume still had and still has, um, for gabbling and for not having the, the quote, faintest notion of what the bill was about. Um, and he roundly castigated her for her lack of proper pronunciation. 
And, uh, Mr Speaker, I'm sure um, you will appreciate, as will others in the House, that when you've been castigated by um, Lockwood Smith for improper pronunciation, you certainly know you've been castigated. But he did support the bill. All right, Mr Speaker, he expressed the national opposition's uh, support for it. Get used to that term, gentlemen. Um, as did Mr Doug Bulletin from the New Zealand First Party in his uh, inimitable laconic style. Um, and Keith Locke and Shane Jones, but not the Mary Party, Mr Speaker. I found this quite intriguing. Um, before he was an honourable, uh, Dr Peter Sharples railed against the bill. He said that it breached the treaty, um, and, and he, said it was, uh, he began his speech actually by saying it was going to contribute to the extermination of the Tuatara. It all seemed to make sense as he, as he unfolded. Um, so uh, he proclaimed that his party's opposition to the bill was on the basis of the recognition, recognition of um, Tina Rangatiratanga. So um, I'll be fascinated to see whether or not the Mary Party uh, support this amendment bill, Mr Speaker, and perhaps there's enough in it, enough that's been changed um, to change the mind of the Mary Party, and maybe they will uh, find it themselves to revisit that uh, original opposition. So, Mr Speaker, here we find ourselves in, in the 51st Parliament um, bringing modification to a bill that was originally initiated by the 48th, um, and some of the, the changes that, that the amendment bill brings about are technical, and some are minor. There is nothing, as I say, earth-shattering in it. There's nothing in here that uh, I can see at first, at first reading that, um, that we will violently um, oppose. There are some questions, obviously, which I will look forward to uh, examining, as I say, in greater detail in the Select Committee. The fixed term for a, a geographical indicator, uh, limiting it to 10 years with an ongoing right of renewal, um, obviously is a, is a feature of this amendment, Mr Speaker, and, and it may be a good thing. Um, or it might just be a cynical ploy um, to extract even more in the way of, of fees from an industry which is already, already horribly overburdened with taxes and levies and duties. But I will reserve judgment on that until we have had uh, submissions, Mr Speaker, from uh, submitters to the committee. The provisions relating to the origin of wine we certainly agree with in that uh, the 85 per cent requirement for uh, grapes being grown in the particular geographical location remains. Um, but that it also enforces the requirement for the other 15% to be at least from New Zealand, because it's one thing to say that uh, a Pinot Noir is a central Otago Pinot Noir if 85% if of the grapes are grown in central Otago and the other 15% are perhaps grown in Waipara. But it's quite another matter to call it a central Otago Pinot Noir when the other 15%, one-sixth of the wine, in fact, are grown in Chile or Tasmania or Bulgaria uh, or anywhere else. So, at this stage, um, Mr Speaker, I don't intend to take too much more time uh, of the House's time. Um, I reiterate that New Zealand First will support this bill to the Select Committee, um, very probably beyond, and I look forward to examining it there, particularly regarding the safety of the Tuataras. Thank you.